welcome back to uh, to the rocket shop. Um, today we're taking a look at a a problem that has been causing us some headaches lately. Um, let me try and, and tell you what's going on here. Um, this is the inner and the outer liner of the uh, BPM5 engine, our new uh, research engine. And we have one particular issue that we need to address here. Uh, these two are going to fit uh, one inside the other. And we're going to have to make sure that because of all the heating and, and warping of the metal, that these two walls don't end up touching each other on the inside. If they touch each other, they will block for the uh, for the cooling of the of the fuel flow flowing from the bottom of the engine all the way up to the injector. So if these two walls uh, touch each other, there will be no flu, uh, flow. There will be a local overheating, and we simply risk uh, the engine melting. Now, to keep these two from touching, uh, one simple way to do it would be to take something like this, which is just in this case a two millimeter solid copper wire, and then simply attach it to the inner liner in such a way that when these two liners are uh, mounted one inside the other, that despite how the, the metal should decide to warp, there is simply a spacer inside that will keep the two walls from touching each other. Now, the part about the headache is that we have been trying to figure out how to attach uh, this kind of spacer to the inner liner or the outer liner without uh, causing warping from, from the heating itself. Um, our first line of, uh, of solving this is trying to solder this spacer to the liner itself. Now, when doing the soldering, um, we risk uh, this local warpage uh, because of the heating. And I can show you a little bit about what is going on. We've been doing some testing here. Some of this is uh, spot welding. And up here on near the other side, you can see uh, soldering or bracing at these two different uh, uh, wires here. Now what happens is that you can see the discoloring of the metal, which means that uh, this metal plate is starting to bend and warp just because of the local heating we're doing. So in some of the early experiments we've been doing with attaching this spacer, um, we simply haven't reached a uh, proper result because if we try to do this on these two liners, they will warp so much that they won't fit inside each other. And we're going to have to find a way around this because the spacers need to be there. So we've come up with a slightly different approach this time. Um, the basic idea is that we we're going to use a, a very big oven that can do the soldering in one process. So everything, the heat liners, the spacers, the solder material, is all going to be heated uh, at the same rate. It will then naturally expand because uh, of, of the temperature increasing, but it will all do it in a, uh, in a uniform way. So we should be able to prevent local warping because of local heating in that the whole thing will expand and contract at the same thing when the temperature goes up and down. So we need to prepare the spaces in such a way that we can attach them to the liners, keep them in place during the uh, heating and cooling process, and then achieve a result where the spaces are uh, well, very well atta attached to the liners so that they can perform their, uh, their uh, required assignment without any problems. So, we have this issue that we have a spacer, we have tried a uh, solid copper wire, but we have decided to try an experiment today which is slightly different. Uh, the idea is that to simply to take a uh, three millimeter copper tube, which has been grind it in such a way that it has now a thickness on this side of two millimeters. This is the same thickness as this uh, solid copper wire, which is the right dimensions for a spacer. Now, we need to still add the soldering material, which is in this case uh, something we just commonly refer to as uh, silver solder. It is a 
high temperature soldering material which melts at approximately 650 degrees Celsius. It contains approximately 55% silver and then 21% copper and a little bit of uh, zinc and uh, tin. So what we're simply going to do to try to do today is to take one of these copper wires, grinded copper wires, wherein actually one of these sticks of silver solder material actually fits quite snugly into the groove exposed by the grinding. And then we have a test tube, which is the same thickness as uh, the liner material. And in this case, we're going to try and flip this copper tube with inserted solder wire like this. Then we're going to attach it to this test pipe as well as we can. And then we will actually attempt local heating. This means that we will uh, we can do this experiment without needing the uh, the huge oven for this uh, experiment, and we can see if this uh, solder material, embedded solder material, will attach this copper spacer properly to this test tube. Now, if we can do this in this experiment, we should be able to do exactly the same process and attach a whole lot of more of these grinded uh, copper tubes to the inner liner itself, put the whole thing in the oven and hopefully solder everything in place in just one go. I'm sorry for the noise around, but uh, we're quite busy today, so this is the best we can do. Um, I'm just here holding uh, the results of our two first uh, soldering attempts. Uh, I did mention this problem we have between the inner liner and the outer liner of uh, the rocket engine. We need to keep those spaced properly. And uh, these uh, grinded uh, three millimeter copper tubes that has been grinded down to two millimeters and then soldered onto this test tube uh, was uh, one of our ways to try to, to counter this little problem. So I just want to show you what we achieved with some very rudimentary hands-on experiments with this uh, soldering process. This is the first uh, tube that we, uh, that we soldered. It was filled from this end down to this line here with this silver solder material we are using for this experiment. This soldering, this soldering material melts at 650 degrees Celsius and it has a tendency to creep very well along surfaces when it is hot and uh, melts it. So from what we can see here, it seems to indicate that the soldering material ran down to this point and then no further. From the rest of the soldering, it seems to have decent contact uh, everywhere um, and it's, it's not going to fall off this test, test tube. What we, what we can also see from this experiment is that the surface is somewhat uh, corroded or oxidized by, uh, by the uh, oxygen from the air and the heat we applied to this test tube. So 
it would have been better if this, uh, this oxidation did not occur. Now, this is the second attempt we did. In this case, the entire tube was filled up with this uh, silver soldering material, and a lot more of this flux that prepares the surface for soldering was, uh, was added in this experiment. Uh, from what we can tell here, along this line, along the copper tube, um, this brightly silvered color is the silver solder material that has crept out from underneath uh, the contact phases, and again showing us that it looks like we have a full, uh, full contact soldering all along this test tube. Now we're going to take this tube and then uh, we're going to slice it apart in a few pieces and then, um, then clean the surfaces in a way to inspect the inner part of this tube to see how this soldering material actually uh, moved around inside the tube and if it's still there. So this looks pretty promising for a, for a desktop, uh, um, tabletop attempt here. just a real quick and dirty experiment. I just put the test tube, which we've now cut up into a bunch of pieces, into this lathe and then just try to, to get a really, really smooth surface in such a way that we could take a look what's going on inside the copper tubes. And It's a little difficult to see, but it looks like at this end, the copper tube is, is hollow. I mean, the soldering material has, uh, has exited uh, around the, the interface between, uh, between the copper tube and the test tube. So it's not completely filled, uh, the, the grinded copper tube is not filled up with soldering material. So I'm just going to cut those, carefully cut with a sharp knife, just these small burrs from the, uh, from the copper tube. Just cut them out and see if, if there is a cavity inside the copper tube where the uh, silver solder material used to be. I'll just find something that can do that. This one here is pretty evident. Uh, it seems that where we cut this uh, test tube completely arbitrary, it looks like we bumped into an air bubble uh, or a gas bubble inside this little copper tube. Uh, the soldering, silver soldering material is, is quite visible down there, but there is also a cavity. But the interface between the test tube itself, it's quite difficult to see in in, in this light, but there is a completely smooth and almost invisible interface between this reddish copper tube and this silverish test tube. So the soldering looks pretty good. Uh, this might also be evident that we were able to cut the test tube uh, with the big cold saw we have outside the machine shop and then putting it in the lathe as well without this uh, piece of copper tube simply breaking off. If we had been doing a bad soldering it, it wouldn't probably wouldn't have had the strength to just keep sitting here on the tube nice. Now if we take a look, look at the other one over here which was the first uh, soldering attempt we did uh, the cavity is much much deeper from what I can tell here, this is actually uh, the part where uh, we started. I mean, the, the silver solder material, the silver solder rod, was level with this end of the tube and then extended 12 centimeters in that direction. What seems to have happened is that 
uh, whatever solder material was deposited inside this uh, copper tube flowed along the length of the tube, as we could see uh, uh, earlier, and it simply left a cavity, but still with a very good soldering connection to the test tube. So both of these methods look pretty useful. I'm quite happy with both of them. We're going to take a little look at uh, the uh, inner and outer liner of, uh, of the rocket engine, the PPM-5 rocket engine, which we have had in a ceramics oven for, uh, for tempering. We'll take a look at this. Looking at one of the liners that came out of uh, thermal, thermal tempering, um, we borrowed a ceramics oven which we modified slightly so that we could uh, inject uh, inert gas, in this case uh, argon, which we use from our uh, welding machinery, into this uh, ceramics oven. And the basic idea is that Injecting this inert gas forces all the oxygen-rich uh, atmosphere out of the oven and should allow us to, to uh, reach very high temperatures required for the tempering without the surface of this uh, steel tube getting uh, corroded and, and oxidized. Um, the results look somewhat ambiguous. Um, it doesn't look like very clean, fresh, new, shiny metal. So something has definitely occurred during the tempering process. Um, we have one or two uh, different um, theories here. One of them is that, uh, that these uh, liners were not properly degreased and cleaned before we, uh, we put them in the oven, which means that uh, it is basically burnt oil we are seeing on the surface. The second option is that the protective inert atmosphere wasn't sufficient to prevent the tube from, uh, from oxidizing. Um, so that's the second option we have here. When we do inspect the liner, something is quite apparent. Um, this not very nice looking surface, if I just take my finger and then just do like this, I mean, <clears throat> it's quite evident that there is some nice shiny metal underneath. Now, if this was real corrosion and oxidation of the uh, steel surface, I mean, it shouldn't be possible to, to take this powderish, nearly non-existent material and then just rub it off by the tip of my finger. So if we apply some slightly more effective tools, It actually looks quite nice and shiny underneath this powderish coat. So at least some of what we're seeing seems just to be a, a layer of, of fluffy surface material that we can just simply re remove mechanically. The same is actually evident down here. And it, this color, it, it really, really, really looks rusted. Again, if just Applying a finger here, this reddish pink coat simply comes off. And underneath there is 
nice and shiny metal. So it looks like it's just really a surface issue here. On the other hand, we have something that looks somewhat more serious here. What we are seeing here is something different. It's flaky, which very much leads to the idea of, uh, of real oxidation. It looks like the inert atmosphere didn't really reach this point. Now this part down here was actually against the bottom of the oven and it wasn't uh, properly spaced from the bottom of the oven so we have a theory that the inert atmosphere, uh, the inert gas didn't, simply didn't enter this, uh, this region here. We haven't looked how far this flaky region extends inside the liner but uh, we'll be taking a closer look at this. However, the surface underneath still looks pretty nice and shiny. So we're going to have to investigate further if this surface will be, uh, will be sufficient for, uh, for, for being the internal part of the rocket engine. Welcome back to Copenhagen Suboptils, this time uh, broadcasting from a secret location. Um, we are going to do another uh, soldering attempt today and thermal tempering uh, attempt all at the same time. So I'm just going to take you through what we, what we have and what we're going to try to do. This is a very nice uh, big oven for uh, ceramics and clay we have been uh, allowed access to. <clears throat> and we're going to put a number of things into this one today. There has been a little bit of a doubt regarding if we got the inert atmosphere in here correct or not. So that's one of the things we're going to determine uh, with today's experiment. Now, the second part is we're going to do some soldering as well. This might be possible to do it just in the inert atmosphere we have in here, but we have made an extra, well, done some extra tricks today to make sure that we can use a completely inert atmosphere. We're a little bit worried if, if, this, uh, if this oven is simply leaking too much so that we don't have argon uh, fulfilling the entire cavity in here. So, but let me just take you through what's going on here. All of these uh, coils in here will go orange to white hot and heat the entire oven. There is a pipe in here extending to a little below the middle of the oven this pipe comes out here and then extends all the way down to one of these bottles. Now these bottles here is actually just a uh, normal uh, pressure gas uh, bottle for, uh, for welding. These contains uh, the same argon we're using for, uh, for welding. So today we manufactured a very special, rather big thing here. This is basically uh, what we're calling the gas chamber. Now, this plate here fits on top of this one. And then this cylinder is basically gas proof, uh, leak proof. The only way uh, gas can come in and out of this one is either through this little hole or some very small cracks uh, beneath this lid. Now, this little hole here fits quite well with this pipe we have in here. So half of the things we're going to put into the oven today is going to be inside this gas chamber, which will be guaranteed to be completely flooded with inert argon. All of this, uh, the entire gas chamber has been manufactured from stainless steel, which means that we should have little to no problems with uh, oxidation, surface oxidation, even if there was no inert atmosphere present. So, first of all, we're going to take one of our uh, BPM5 liners, either the inner or the outer liner, doesn't matter, which has been completely degreased thoroughly many times. In that case, we're absolutely sure that 
this powderish surface coating we saw earlier uh, has nothing to do with, uh, with the liner not being completely degreased. So both liners are completely degreased. One of them is going to be situated inside the gas chamber. The other one is just going to be outside like the last uh, heat tempering experiment we did. So these two liners are for another heat treatment or heat tempering experiment. Then we have some soldering experiments to do as well. We have two of these test pipes here, which has they they look uh, well covered in 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 dust or white dust. This is actually the flux material which is used to prepare the surface and clean it thoroughly for the soldering material to to attach and bond uh, our test tube and these small uh, copper tube spaces. Now different from the last experiment we did, um, we have a strand, a solid rod of two millimeter diameter uh, copper wire here in the middle. And this grayish goo is what is called soldering paste. It's a mixture of uh, flux uh, as well as uh, a silver soldering material. The other two tubes we have here are basically similar to the ones we, we used earlier with a grinded a copper tube with actually a rod of our preferred silver soldering material in, in the cavity. You can actually see right here down at this little end there is a tiny piece of the silver rod, uh, silver soldering material extending from this, uh, from this copper tube. So one of these are going to be placed inside uh, this cavity as well, inside the gas chamber. And then finally, we have a tiny experiment, which basically looks like this. A little dissimilar from the other things we're trying today, this is a stainless steel plate. It has been completely covered in this preferred flux material. And then we have a piece of copper. This is just a bar of copper and then a small rod of our silver soldering material. So this is the last thing we're going to stash, one inside the gas chamber and one on the outside. Basically we're just going to put the copper like this and once uh, this, uh, the heat goes up to the place where the uh, silver solder melts, this copper uh, rod will just slightly and gently just float down and the soldering material will disperse underneath it. So we have a whole lot of things to do in just one experiment today. Okay, I just want to show you the, the latest results from our uh, most recent soldering test. Um, this is again one of our test tubes, just an iron tube. Now we have three things soldered onto this tube. 
These two here and here are these uh, three millimeter uh, diameter copper tubes I mentioned that we grinded one third the way through so it became like two millimeters high. It also left an inside cavity which fitted very well with a, uh, with a stick of this silver solder material. Now we, in the middle here, we have something different. This is a solid two millimeter copper uh, wire. And we used a different method for, uh, for soldering this one. While these two contained an entire uh, length of silver solder material, this one used silver soldering paste. Now that's simply a paste that is, uh, that is put underneath whatever you want to solder. And then this paste uh, decomposes into a mixture of flux and uh, the silver solder material itself. So what is evident from all of these three is that some of the silver uh, went downwards. This one was uh, soldered standing upright. So this is the lower end and the other end is the upper end. Gravity seemed to have pulled most of the silver out of the uh, out of the cavity, and a lot of it has deposed uh, or has has stuck down here at the bottom of of, uh, of the test tube. So while all of these three seem to be rather well connected to to the test tube, uh, if one looks really carefully, one can see cavities where the silver solder material hasn't uh, bridged the gap between the test tube and the copper tube. We had some issues trying to grind down this second batch of copper tubes. Um, and basically, if we want to go along that route, we will have to find a, a better way of, of grinding these uh, copper tubes more consistently. However, it proves that the flux material and the inert atmosphere in the gas chamber works very well and there is basically no surface corrosion due to, uh, to oxygen in, in, in this inert atmosphere. So what we want to try to do, and now we are going for, uh, for a full score, we're going to solder an entire inner liner this next time we're doing a soldering attempt. So what we are going to try to do is to uh, make a hybrid out of these uh, two examples we have here. First of all, we're going to do the next soldering attempt with the, uh, with the motor or the inner line of the rocket motor lying down like this. We can't have a, a big difference of height where gravity can pull the silver solder material a long way. So we'll have to do it uh, horizontal. That's the first part. The gas chamber can easily be modified to do a, a horizontal soldering process. Now, the second thing is we have received some extremely valuable help here in that um, we have received a silver solder material in strip form. That is uh, a strip which is approximately 0.2 millimeters thick and about five millimeters wide. Now, the main problem we have had so far is placing the silver solder material correctly when we are doing the soldering process because it's shut and sealed inside an oven and we can't get to it. We can't apply silver solder material manually anywhere. So everything has to be completely pre-packed and then heated and soldered and cooled off and then everything should, uh, should work in that process. So what we're going to do, and I'm going to show you just in a second, we're going to basically do, repeat this, uh, the attempt where with this two millimeter diameter um, solid copper wire. Welcome back to uh, the workshop in Copenhagen Suborbitals. We're jumping straight into uh, to things today. This is the inner liner from the BPM-5 uh, engine. It's one of the 
liners that received uh, thermal tempering rather early on. So it's one of those that has been exposed to an incomplete inert atmosphere. What has turned out to be the case is that uh, after the thermal tempering, it turned out that there is a, a hard surface layer on top of the metal which became exposed during the uh, tempering process. It looks like it's something from the manufacturing or the rolling of these uh, steel plates, but regardless, it's something that can be removed uh, mechanically. And best of all, we have completely clean, shiny uh, steel underneath. And that surface is what we need when we're going to solder our cup spacers onto this inner liner. This is the BPM5 inner liner we saw earlier and I'm just going to show you what we're going to try to do for this final soldering attempt. Uh, these here are our 2 mm diameter uh, copper wires and I'm simply going to start hinging them at the top here just to keep, uh, keep them under control like this. Then I'm going to fit all of 8 of these, uh, of these spaces. And then I'm going to start out with just actually a regular hose band, which I'm going to put up here and just tighten this. This means that I will have all of these uh, copper uh, spaces fixed so they can't move. Now, once I got the first hose band in place up here, I am going to pull out the silver solder material. Now, this silver solder strip you can see here is actually very very convenient because basically what we have to do is simply to cut it to length. So once this copper strand is completely fixed up here, I'm going to gently wedge the, this uh, spacer out and then I am going to slide this strip all the way to the top, can't show it quite here without the hose band, in which case this silver solder material will be sandwiched underneath this spacer copper. I'm just going to apply a, a whole lot of hose bands all the way downwards here and then just align these all the way until I get to the bottom here. And then I'm just going to cut the remainder of, uh, of the spacers off. Now, this means that I should have the silver solder material right where I want it, underneath these copper spaces, and everything should be kept well in place by a host of hose bands, and then we put it horizontal into the gas chamber, back into the ceramics oven, and then hopefully by tomorrow afternoon we'll have a perfectly soldered BPM5 in a liner with spacers in place. time to, to make a status and a summary of, 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 uh, of our soldering process. Um, basically, we needed to attach a number of spacers to the inner liner of the BPM5 engine in order to create this uh, cavity in which the, flow, uh, the fuel could flow along uh, the entire length of the engine and keep it cool uh, and preventing it from melting. So for that purpose, we decided to try to use some uh, copper spacers, two millimeter solid uh, copper wires, which we decided to attach to the outside of the inner liner. 
Um, we were doing a number of experiments, uh, trying different uh, methods and, and getting mixed results. Uh, and in the end, uh, we started out uh, the last soldering attempt with the use of, um, of silver solder strips, which were sandwiched in between um, the copper wire and uh, the surface of, of the inner liner. Um, we took that to the uh, ceramics oven uh, off-site, subjected it to a horizontal uh, soldering process in inert uh, argon atmosphere, and uh, after a lot of, uh, of post-processing and cleaning up, uh, this is basically the result we ended up with. Um, this is uh, a BPM-5 inner liner with uh, eight uh, spaces uh, soldered to the surface. Um, the silver soldering process worked very well. We have full attachment uh, underneath each of these uh, copper strands. And uh, from the, the cleaning up process, uh, it has been possible to determine that the primary goal of very high heat conduction is definitely achieved. Um, this means that the heat from uh, the combustion inside the inner liner will be transferred through this uh, inner liner to the surface where a lot of uh, fuel will uh, flow very fast along these, uh, these cavities and remove the heat from, uh, from the surface of, of the inner liner. Now, there will be a, the flow will be inhibited and slowed down along or very close uh, to the copper spaces. However, uh, there is uh, so much heat conduction through the silver solder into the copper strand that, uh, that any hotspot that is likely to occur because there actually is no flow directly underneath this uh, copper spacer. Uh, it's very likely we won't see that because the heat is so efficiently transferred into the copper strand, which is further cooled along two sides from the, uh, from the passing alcohol flow. So basically, I'm pretty satisfied with the result. Um, it took a few tries to, to get us here and, and sort of uh, maturing the process, but uh, the result is good and this is definitely repeatable. We'll see if we can find some, some other tricks to, to do this process in a more efficient and, and, and speedy manner because it was quite a hassle trying to, to wrestle uh, eight copper strands and, and eight uh, strips of, of silver solder all at one time. So, but it's doable and we got a very nice result here. And this is definitely something we can use to go flying into space. So we've been experimenting a little bit in between and uh, <clears throat> pioneered a new method which might make our future soldering work much, much easier. I'm just going to show you uh, what, what this is about and what the breakthrough seemed to be. Now, what we learned from last time was that this copper spacer and this fantastic silver solder material in strip form could be sandwiched one upon the other. Still, you can see why this was rather difficult with eight strands of copper and eight strands of silver solder and keeping everything in place at one time. But the basic idea is to sandwich the silver solder material in between the copper spacer and the liner. In this way, when you put the whole thing into the ceramics oven with the inert atmosphere, the silver solder material will melt underneath the entire uh, copper wire in the full length and give a very efficient mechanical and thermally conductive uh, adhesion between the two. However, the machine that really made the difference in these latest experiments is this rather ancient antique machine over here. It is basically just a very old-fashioned spot welder. 
So what it basically does is you put something in between these two uh, prongs here and you squeeze a foot pedal, it squeezes the two objects together and then it puts a rather large current through this loop here. It simply results in a molten spot on the material you're trying to attach in between these prongs and voila, your two items are adjoined. I'm just going to show you how this, uh, this method works. Uh, this is a leftover piece from the uh, BPM5 production and this is just one of my copper strands. Uh, I just grinded off this surface uh, just to make sure there is uh, excellent electrical contact, otherwise this process won't work. But this is, this is how it starts. I simply put it on the lower prong, uh, the liner, and then just gently align this, squeeze, and then apply some power. And now this copper strand is attached to the liner. Now, we still need the solder material, so this is what I am going to show you here. Now, normally, if this was a real production run, I would already have applied a line of uh, flux material, which actually does the cleaning work on the surface I have been doing with a mechanic grinder. But for the next spot, I'm going to gently wriggle this piece of silver solder as far as I can, like this, and then I'm going to put on a second spot like this. So now I have this little sandwich construction of copper wire and this silver solder material strand. At this point I'm only juggling one copper strand and one silver solder strip, which is way easier than eight. And I can easily guide and adjust this, these two components the way I want. And just to, to show you, I'll just do this a little more quickly than I will usually do. What happens is that the spot welder melts the silver solder material first. In that case, it is uh, it's squeezed out of the, uh, of the induction area. And then the, uh, the copper wire comes into contact with, uh, with the wall of the liner. Then that piece adjourns, uh, adheres, and then the copper strand and the, uh, and the inner liner are fixed and, and basically prepared to go straight to the oven. Okay. This was a not so scientific experiment, but it, it underlines what the general idea, uh, general idea is. And we have also been, been proving this to work so far. Now what I have here is just one strand of uh, copper spacer, which is uh, adjoined to the, uh, to the liner. And I still have the silver solder strip material squeezed and sandwiched in between underneath. Now what's going to happen when I take this to the ceramics oven is that the silver solder material will melt and then uh, even out uh, underneath this copper wire and actually produce the result we have here. This is a much faster and much easier process and we're probably going to use this for the next BPN5 engines.